Hi everybody, Martin at Flicker and Feathers again today. I'm tying another old style pattern that's sort of fallen from popularity, I would say, but it's well worth having. It's the ostrich nymph. As always, I'll put materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone who wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content as well as being entered into the giveaways. I've got my hook my vice, this is a size 14 uh, nymph hook, this is a TMCO 5262 but you can use anything you like, right? Um, Camazam B200, Full and Mill nymph special, anything like that. And I've put on 8 wraps of uh, 015 lead wire. You can adjust that to suit, obviously. You want it heavier or lighter. But that's just at the thorax here. Yeah. I've run on some 8 aught uni thread and brown. You can use, you can match the colour or you can. Uh, Use a hot contrasting colour or something. It's entirely up to you. These these are great for like varying and adjusting these flies. So I've got to tie in my tail, which is about half a dozen or so <coughs> pheasant tail fibres here. Five, six, whatever, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to put them about a shank length out the back. I just Tie them off up to the front, snap them away, right? And then I'll just set them on my desk for later. And then on the way back down, I'm going to take my wire for the rib. I'm just using fine silver, but again, adjust the colours. You can make the rib a bit heavier if you wish. Uh, so it stands out more. Use a bright coloured wire. You know, you could use olive, olive ostrich and chartreuse wire or something is nice. I'm going to take a single ostrich herald, that was not very good. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to catch this in, I'm going to draw it back as I go, catch that in. Now before I wind it, very, very, very light amount of super glue because it's only a single herald, right? Protects it, makes it much stronger. Now I'm going to wind this the opposite direction to everything else, so I'm winding it towards myself. Right? This is the strongest way of counter wrapping, right? Um it's much easier for the thread to catch a piece of feather in going the opposite direction tightly and securely than it is to do it with wire. Right? Winding this up, touch and turns, when I get to my thread, come across, I turn on the hook, I turn back over, turn on the hook, turn back over. Right? And you can just pull it back, lock it in place to be sure, snap it away, right? So now I'm going to wind my wire same direction as the thread and everything else. So full turn at the back and then say four or five up the abdomen. Come across your thread, a few turns to hold it, bend and break the wire. Right. And that's nice and strong. Your thread's tightening the wire as you tie in. If you counter wrap the way a lot of folk, particularly in America, people counter wrap with the wire coming against the thread, 
the threads are actually pushing the wire open as you try to tie it in and it gives you a less secure tie-in than doing it this way right, thorax cover got to take these pheasant tail fibres from earlier right, what I've left catch them in kind of in the middle just check them for length, that will do it three or four wraps down and fold them back so I've got the the doubled amount just you can flatten them there then really tighten the thread then <coughs> and then I'm just going to use the same piece of ostrich get that tied in and the same again, a bit of super glue to protect it. Right. And then, I mean, it doesn't really matter because you're no ribbon it, but I will wind it towards myself anyway. And as you go, this the stem or the hair is sticking to the glue. making for a quite a durable fly actually um, my feeling is that probably flies like this fell from popularity before the brushable glue because they were never durable right? um, now that we've got the brushable glue and you can give them that wee bit of help they're really really tough so, oops, just got to come in with the pheasant tail now, pull it across, take like, two loose wraps, and then you can put it tight and then make sure all the fibres are nice and tight. And then you can flatten them and tighten up. It gives you a nice wide thorax cover if you flatten them like that. And it makes for quite a nice nymph, you know. Um, come in, trim that away. We've got a wax on my thread. Come to the front and just anything that's going forward, just sweep it back. Sometimes the ostrich hair fibres can kind of get in the way a wee bit, but just use your thumbnail and get the thread in front of them. And then, whip finish. And another. Build a nice head. The head's part of the fly. Right. And insects don't look, I mean, this is obviously like an agile dart or nymph or whatever in profile. They've got heads, um, they don't just stop at the thorax. So, there you go. As I say, take this as a template, you tie that, I mean, just like this is fine, change the colour. You can add a pearly back, you can add a thorax flashback, hot head, change the colour of the thorax olive and bright orange or something like that it's, it makes for a very very versatile pattern that is also very very effective these are the fibres of the ostrich herald really move and breathe um, it's, it's like tiny marabou in the water uh, really good in slow water on rivers Although it does work in fast water too, and it, I think, I mean, it really comes into its own as a still water fly, this. Well worth tying up. So, 
Hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines guys, bye.